Welcome back to Chapter 6, Part 2, Video 2. Let's do our examples. Okay, for practice, we're just going to practice with um, z-scores and working with your calculator, and then we're going to actually look at a, a word problem, a kind of problem that you would actually use this for. What percent of a standard normal model is found in each region? Draw a picture. Remember, you find the area underneath the curve in that region, and then you just convert that area to a percent, okay? Um, the total area under the curve is one, and, and that's just a good thing to know because it helps you with the relative size of the different percents that you find and areas that you find. So we want z greater than negative 2.05. So we sketch a normal curve. Negative 2.05 is pretty far to the left of the mean of zero, and we want the area greater than that, so the area to the right. So in your calculator, you want to go to the scratch pad, and um, you want to select, go to your menu, select statistics, select distributions. In the distributions, you'll see normal PDF as well as normal CDF. You want CDF. You want the cumulative distribution function. PDF gives you like the Y value associated with that um, Z value. You don't want that. We never want that. We want normal CDF. Okay, so then you're going to do lower bound. It has negative infinity in there, but we're not coming from negative infinity. We're coming from negative 2.05, so we type that over it. For your upper bound, you want positive infinity, just plain infinity. And if you'll look down by uh, where Dude, the, the girl, up, Bill Hockey game has been canceled. Bill Hockey is canceled for today. Good to know. Um, so um, you look at the, the keys down there by the letter keys, the ones to the left. There's the EE -E key and then there's the PI key. If you choose the PI key, one of the options in the menu that pops up is infinity. So select infinity. You want to leave the mean zero and the standard deviation one because we are using the standard normal distribution. And the calculator is going to give you 0 .7, uh, 0, excuse me, 0 0.9798 on and on and on. Um, if you were being asked for the area or what proportion of observations, any of those things, if you were reporting back just as a decimal, you would go to four decimal places because that's what's in the table of values. Because we're doing a percent, you round to four decimal places and then convert it to percent form, so 97.98%. That's the percentage of the whole standard normal that is to the right of negative 2.05. Okay, so for z less than negative 0 0.33, we're going to be shading to the left this time. We draw our little normal model there. Negative 0.33 is just barely to the left of the mean of 0. And we're going as far left as possible and even further and further, so toward negative infinity. So once again in your scratch pad, you're going to go to the menu and select statistics, select distribution, select normal CDF. You're going to leave the lower bound this time as negative infinity. And we're going to go from negative infinity up to negative 0.33 on that, that horizontal axis there, our, our Z score axis, and the calculator gives you 0 0.3707 on and on and on, so 37.07%. Okay, we want to know the percent of the normal model that's found in the region where 1.2 is less than Z is less than 1.8, so on our horizontal, we draw, we sketch our little normal, standard normal model there. And on our horizontal, we locate, we approximate where 1.2 would be and where 1.8 would be. Um, and we showed this to Z scores. And we shade the area in between. So it's not going to be a very big area, and we're not going to have a very large percent. Um, then we go on our scratch pad, we go to Menu, Statistics, Distribution, and we pick out Normal CDF. We do a lower bound of 1.2 and an upper bound of 1.8, leaving the mean as, as zero and the standard Otis deviation Carol as one. And that's going to give you 0.0791 or 7.91%. Okay, so let's consider problem 38 on page 132. Based on the normal model in 
mean of 100, standard deviation of 16, describing IQ scores, what percent of people's IQ scores would you expect to be over 80? So this is saying, you know, what percent would you expect to be over 80? So Y greater than 80. So we're going to go from Y to Z. And so Z is equal to observation, our Y value, minus the mean over the standard deviation. So we have 80 minus 100 over 16. Negative 20 over 16 is negative 1.25. And so we draw a little picture. We estimate where negative 1.25 would be. And since it's over 80, we want everything that's over negative 1.25, so bigger than negative 1.25. So we shade to the right. We grab our calculator and we go to the scratch pad. We go to menu, statistics, distribution. We select normal CDF. We use a lower bound of negative 1.25 and we're going to positive infinity. The calculator gives 0 0.8943 blah, 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 and so 89.44%. So 89.44% of people would have IQ scores over 80. Under 90. So again, same process. You, you find the z-score. So you do 90 minus 100 over 16. So you get negative 10 over 16, which is negative uh, 0 0.625. If you, since this one really didn't have to round any further than that, I left it to three decimal places. If you really want to round it to negative, 0 0.63, that's fine. You're going to get approximately the same answer. Uh, because it's under 90, so that's less than 90, we're going in the less than direction to the left. So negative 0 0.625 is going to be to the left of 0 there. And then we're going to shade to the left. So our lower bound will be negative infinity. Our upper bound will be negative 0 0.625. We do normal CDF with that. We always leave the mean zero and the standard deviation one. And so we find that 26.6% of people's IQ scores would be under 90. Between 112 and 132, this time we're going to have to find um, two Z scores, one for 112 and one for 132. So for 112, we calculate and we get 0.75. For 132, we do the 132 minus 100 over 16, and we get 2. So then we draw a picture. So we have our, our standard normal curve there. Um, the smaller z value, our lower bound would be 0.75. The larger one, the upper bound is 2, and we've shaded everything in between. So we're going to use our, our calculator. We're going to do normal CDF. We're going to use a lower bound of 0.75, an upper bound of 2, and so we find that 20.39% of individuals have um, IQs between 112 and 132. Okay, now we're going to work backwards. We've been working forwards. We've been taking either Z values or observations and finding percents related to that. Now we're going to be given a percentage, and we're going to... Um, come up with z-scores first, and then we'll go from z-scores to actually observations. In a standard normal model, what values of z cut, cut or cuts off the region described? Remember to draw a picture first. So for the first one, we want the lowest 12%. So the area would be 0.12. Okay, so that's in the left tail. All the way, just to kind of give you a guideline, all the way to the mean there, that's also the median, that's 50%. That's an area of 0.5. So 0.12 is a little over a fifth of the way there, you know, um, of the area there. Um, so here we've got 0.15, and we want to know what that Z value is. Now, I've got it written on the screen. The way I got it was I did inverse normal 0.12. Inverse normal always takes area to the left and gives you the Z score associated with it. So how do you get inverse normal? Again, you go to your scratch pad, you pick menu, you pick statistics, class you're in. This is related to a distribution, so you pick distributions. Um, below normal PDF is normal CDF, and below normal CDF is inverse normal. And so you tell it inverse normal, 0.12, mean is 0, standard deviation is 1. You press, you know, keep arrowing down until you get to OK, press Enter and it gives you z equals negative 1.17. The highest 30%. Now, we're going to draw a picture. And remember, to do inverse normal, you have to have area to the left. This is describing area to the right. 
Okay, the area we're really interested in is that upper 30%. That's why that's shaded in. But what we have to tell the calculator is the complement of that, the area to the left. So that one z-score is going to block off the upper 30%. Um, it's also going to block off the lower 100% minus 30% is 70%. So you're going to put in inverse norm 0.7. And so, again, scratch pad, what you know, menu, what class are you in, statistics. Is this related to a distribution? Yes, so go to distribution. You want inverse normal. 0.7. And so the z-score that it gives you back is 0.52. So being 0.52 standard deviations above the mean in a normally distributed um, model means that you are the, the, the first score to be able to be in the upper 30%. The highest 7%, again, similar situation. You're marking off that 7% that in the right tail. We have to give it the left um, tail, the area to the left, in order to do inverse normal. So we do 1 minus 0 0.07 to get 0.93. Inverse normal of 0.93 it gives us a z-score of 1.48. Middle 50%. This gets a little more interesting because you've got to take that out of the middle and then think about what that gives you in either tail. Okay, middle 50% means that there's 50% left, because 100% minus 50% is 50%, that split evenly in the two tails. So that means you divide by two. So that gives you 25% in each tail. Okay, so for the leftmost z-score that we're interested in, there's going to be 25% of the observations less than that. So to find it, we're going to do inverse normal 0.25. For the cutoff on the right, there's going to be that 25% that was in the tail and the 50% that was in the middle. There's going to be 75% of the observations to the left of it, so that area is 0.75. So you need to do inverse norm 0.25, inverse norm 0.75. So, you know, if you need to pause the video to go do that, that's great. Remember, scratch pad, and then you go to statistics, and then you go to, uh, well, statistics on your menu. Then you go to distribution, and you pick inverse normal. You're going to do 0.25. You'll get that that's negative 0.67. Go back and do that with 0.75, and you get 0.67. Okay, hopefully you stopped and did that. Now let's think about what we just found. Um, the values that mark off the first 25% and the bottom 75% are the first and third quartile. So for the standard normal distribution, the first quartile is always negative 0.67, third quartile is always 0.67. So another way of thinking about this is in a normally distributed um, distribution, we expect 50% of the data to fall within 0.67 standard deviations below the mean and 0.67 standard deviations above the mean. Okay, so let's apply this in our IQ um, problem here, just one second, there's a typo, and it bugs me because we're talking about IQs, and there just shouldn't be a typo when we're talking about IQs. All right, um, in the normal model, in mean of 100, standard deviation is 16, what cutoff value bounds the highest 5% of all IQs? Okay, so if we're talking about the highest 5%, we're talking about the lowest 95%, we need that for inverse normal. So draw a picture, it really helps clarify your thinking. Now we're going to find the z value using inverse normal. So z equals inverse normal of 0.95, and so we get 1.64. We're going to convert the z value back to an observation value, a y value. Remember, z equals y minus the mean over the standard deviation. So plug in your specific z value. So 1.64 equals y minus 100 over 16. And then you just solve for y. So you're going to multiply both sides by 16. 1.64 times 16 is 26.24. And that equals y minus 100. So now you're going to add 100 to both sides, and you get y equals 126.24. And that's your answer. So the highest 5% of all IQs, the, the, the lowest value that gets in that top 5% is 126.24. The lowest 30% of all IQs, we draw a little picture. Okay, lowest 30% means we're talking about the, we want the z-score that cut, that is the highest value of that lowest 30% that cuts off 
the, um, the bottom 30%. So we do inverse normal of just 0 0.30 and we get negative 0.52. And then we convert to a y, a y value, an IQ score. So negative 0.52 equals y minus 100 over 16. And so we're going to multiply both sides by 16 and then add 100 and we get y equals 91.68. Uh, we want to find the middle 80% of all IQs, so we draw the picture, and there we've got the 80% out of the middle. So we do 100% minus 80% is 20%, divided by 2 gives us 10% for each tail. So the lower z-score is going to be inverse normal of the 0 0.10, so negative 1.28. The upper bound is going to have that lower tail plus the middle 80% of the, the standard normal model. So it's going to have an area of 0.9. So we're going to do z equals inverse normal of 0.9, and that gives us 1.28. Now, we have to convert both of those to, to y values, to actual observations. So we do negative 1.28 equals y minus 100 over 16, and that's going to give us y equals 79.52. We do the same thing with 1.28, and we get 120.48. So the middle 80% of all IQs is going to fall between 79.52 and 120.48. Okay, guys, that's it for examples. So um, just go back over and make sure you can use your calculator and be ready to work some problems when you come back to class next time. I'll see you then. Have a good day. Bye-bye.